face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, you guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Better, where this week we will cover two Pokemon who are famous for their speed tier and offensive crownness. Consider our defensive typing being, of course, Soul Water, and this is going to be Simipool versus Floatzel. I also have a guest narrator joining today, being Styx from the token minority, who will cover Floatzel while I myself is covering Simipool. The reason for Styx covering Floatzel is actually due to its history in Diamond and Pearl, and of course its growth in Generation 7, 6, and now 7. It is whether or not its niches and viability has well, surpassed it already since the road represents actually the lowest of tiers right now, and that, that even in generation 6 being poorly used. While, as I said, their niches are really strong, Floatzel stood out quite a lot till actually generation 6, where I think both Simipol and Floatzel are on even ground. So, with that said, I'm going to cover Simipol and cover just how interesting a Pokemon this Pokemon really is. Being of a soul of water type and being offensive at that is a niche that is necessarily not covered too much. We have the dual typing combination, which are rare at best, but we never really talked about the soul Pokemon that are usually defensive but can fill the offensive role. Hence, this is why I will talk about Simpore myself. So, with that said, let's talk about the water typing. It shouldn't come as a surprise as the water type is one of the best defensive type pieces in the game. We resist fire, ice, steel, and water, and all have two weaknesses, which are electric and grass. And if you guys already know, ground and water is one of the best combinations in the game due to it resolving it in one of the main issues for water type, yet only keeps one typing, of course, weak, to, which is grass. But water type as a sole defensive typing, definitely one of the best, which makes it interesting for offensive Pokemon when you are defensively as active as this typing can be. So with that cover, let's talk about actually Simipore itself. Much like its other ape brethren, I should say, Simipore represents a 75 in its HP, 98 in both offensive stats, 63 in its defenses, and 101 in speed. However, for a water type, this is a very rare combination of speaking. We only talk about likes of Sharpedo, for example, who does something similar. This is we have a strong speed here, we have good offensive stats, and we have a low well, defensive stat. But being defensively active, as I said, with the typing, Simipore can actually resolve a lot of interesting role, and it really does speak for being an offensive speed or wall breaker on both sides, and possibly a sweeper consider the abilities of Gluttony and Torrent. While Torrent is unreliable, I would say at best, due to the um, defensive capabilities of the Pokemon itself being that you need to be in 33% to actually get a boost in your stat by 50%. Isn't necessarily recommended unless you are going for a Focus Sash set, but that works better in my opinion with Seer and uh, Sage. But for Paul, I would say that Gluttony is a vastly superior one, mainly because of, as stated with the previous videos, um, the pinch berries, which boost your speed, attack, special attack, whatever you want to go for, they are as, vi <laughs> as viable here as they are as ever. And of course, we have recovery items in Thiggy and Lefa Berry and other things like that to boost your HP by 50% when you are around 50%. And that's a recovery I think is very decent for typing that to definitely can possibly set up. That's a very underrated strength to have in an offensive matchup. But in my opinion, the best part about Poor is actually its variety and flexibility in its move pool. Now, it should have come as a surprise, of course, it gets you know the regular stabs in Waterfall, Scald, Hydro Pump, they are definitely up there. But it's the team, it's the tutor move who use who really, really does make this Pokemon shine. We have Ice Beam, Blizzard, clearly, Brick Break, Rock Tomb, um, Acrobatics, which are a very, very interesting move to have if you don't want to go for. Uh, physical or a special set with uh, Ice Beam, you can go for Acrobatics instead against the Pesco Water types. We also have Low Sweep, we have Focus Blast here also, which is really, really good. We have Fling, Shadow Claw, Rock Slide, we have Grass Knot. Grass and Water combination is a very rare combo, so seeing it active, yeah, that's, that's really good. Uh, other than that, when it comes to actually egg move, we have a low kick, tickle, nasty plot, which of course is your bread and butter of this Pokemon due to, of course, boosting your special attack by two stages. 
and we have actually disarming voice and i'm just gonna say that it it, it, it exists it, it's a fairy <laughs> it makes for a decent fairy move we're gonna capitalize on that that's the reason i mention it and of course the two remove we have gang shot we have ice punch superpower aqua tail iron tail knockoff focus punch which works really good defensively with c movie mind and then the recycle throw chop and from previous generation we actually have a few moves that should be mentioned and those are actually power up punch but also dig if you want to capitalize on something like that and go for c move there also however i definitely believe simipore get a broad variety of moves all of them being super viable to capitalize on in use while i would say the physical set of semipore with power punch is not as reliable as a special set it still get a broad move pool with you know gunshot knockoff waterfall ice punch there are a variety here that are worth capitalizing on that set the strongest set for this pokemon clearly is the nasty plot set to get with the hydro pump ice beam focus blast and then either a salak berry or fight you see though salak berry or figure berry is the one you want to prefer due to the defensive typing itself and also of course being able to boost yourself in speed nullifying any possible scarf or hopefully unless you counter the likes of a lowland right for example to be able to actually tackle you head on that said semi pool is actually what i would say the strongest between the um, ape pokemons and uh, it, it is mainly due to the variety of the Pokemon, what it brings, you know, it has a good defensive typing that could work offensively really well if it has coverage. And what does these apes do? Well, they got coverage for days. This is the Wigglytuff area of Moopool and Simipool represents the best of that. Now, with that said, let's go over to Sticks and, of course, the history and viability of Floatzel. What's going on guys, Sticks here with the Token Minorities, and first and foremost, I want to thank Sky for having me on this episode as I am super excited to be here. I know my shorter half, Jolt, has previously been on a couple episodes, so I'm pumped to now have my shot at appearing in this series. On to the comparison. There are a multitude of mediocre water types, and Floatzel is no exception. Don't get me wrong, it has a lot of things going for it, particularly that speed stat that really hits a magic number of outspeeding base 110s. However, it just seems to come up short in everything that you try to have it do. I'll start with the positives. The biggest plus for Floatzel is that aforementioned speed stat. In my opinion, in the current metagame, base 110 speed has become the base 100 speed of DPP in that, in order to be considered fast, without a choice scarf obviously, you have to be able to at least hit that number if out, if not outspeed it, and with a base of 115, Floatzel is an incredibly potent revenge killer slash late game cleaner. Additionally, Floatzel has passable mixed attacking stats, which allow it to hit viably from the special or physical side. This forces opponents to scout out the type of Floatzel being brought, or have their physical wall get smacked by a Hydro Pump, or vice versa for special walls. These stats, combined with a decent move pool of Liquidation, Aqua Jet, Hydro Pump, Focus Blast, Ice Beam, Ice Punch, Crunch, and even Rock Tomb to name a few, make Floatzel have options for almost any given matchup. Floatzel also has a boosting option in bulk up and is one of the few mons that can boast the ability to freely switch into scalds without having to worry about being burnt due to Water Veil. And speaking of Water Veil, Floatzel finally has the ability to run a cheeky switcheroo flame orb set in order to cripple uh, opposing physical attackers or walls, but with the burn nerf this generation, the strategy isn't quite as powerful as it used to be. However, switcheroo with other things like lagging tail, iron ball, while Floatzel doesn't have prankster to be able to get those off immediately, is something that you can potentially use for other situations. However, the flame orb switcheroo set was the one that Floatzel was really able to kind of hang its hat on in that regard. Now, I want to preface this next part by saying that while I will be talking about Floatzel in comparison to other NU and PU water types, as well as talking about its place in the quote unquote tier, I am completely aware that this is a draft style video. Due to the fact that Floatzel and its low tier brethren are typically priced similarly, I felt that it would help you guys think about why you might think about picking Floatzel and what better options may exist as a low tier or low point water type. 
With all that said, you might be wondering why I call Floatzel mediocre. I feel that the best explanation comes in the fact that Floatzel just seems to be missing... something. I'll explain what I mean here shortly, but whenever I would use Floatzel or think about using it, it would always seem to be simply outclassed by another mon that can do the specific job I was looking for better. Let's start with abilities. Now, I don't want anyone to leave this thinking that I think either Swift Swim or Water Veil are bad. They just are only okay on Floatzel. For Swift Swim, Floatzel already outspeeds the majority of mons with Outrain, so when looking for a rain abuser, you will pick a hard hitter that can most effectively take advantage of the limited rain turns, not something that doesn't need the rain to already outspeed stuff. Additionally, Floatzel is outclassed as a rain sweeper on both sides of the spectrum, with mons like Ludicolo and Gorobis being better special sweepers, and Polyrath, Kabutops, and even Beartick being better on the physical side. As for Water Veil, that does give Floatzel the unique niche of being able to set up on Scald users, but there are a couple issues with that set. Floatzel has a horrible setup move given the type of mon its stats lend it to be. So, I don't want you thinking that Bulk Up is a bad setup move, or that's what I'm saying at all, just it doesn't work on Floatzel. Floatzel is meant to come in, hit hard, and get out of there. It is not meant uh, to be a Mon that stays in and sets up. I most compare setup Floatzel to Samurott. Both have comparable physical attacking stats, and both has strong water stabs with filler options. It just so happens that Samurott completely outclasses Floatzel, apart from the speed, due to a better setup move in Swords Dance and a stronger coverage move uh, for Grass types in Megahorn. Additionally, Samurott also has bulk that allows it to take a hit while setting up, providing more opportunities to sweep. Additionally, Floatzel's move pool isn't good enough to abuse that plus one because, let's be real, a rational opponent is not going to let Floatzel get more than plus one. While Liquidation, Ice Punch, and Aqua Jet are all solid options, Floatzel's other coverage moves are, once again, mediocre at best. Crunch doesn't hit anything particularly significantly harder than Liquidation or Ice Punch. Focus Punch and Dig are unreliable, although I will admit, potentially deadly with the Z-move, making Brick Break the best option for hitting Steels cons and Ice Waters super effectively consistently, and Rock Tomb is... well, Rock Tomb. Floatzel can't really take advantage of the speed drop that it provides. Now, other mons like Breloom definitely can, but that's because they use that speed drop to maximum potential. Floatzel is more than likely going to be outspeeding that mon anyway, so Rock, uh, Rock Tomb really does not do a whole lot otherwise. By looking at other comparable water types, Samurott gets access to Knockoff, Super Power, and Sacred Sword. Basculin, on top of adaptability, gets Superpower, Head Smash, and Zen Headbutt, and even Simapore, the Mon that we are comparing this to, has access to Knock Off, Superpower, and Gunk Shot. Floatzel's limited move pool leaves it outclassed heavily by many other Mons on the physical side. Now let's take a look at Special Floatzel. This is where I believe Floatzel's best potential lies in a choice spec set con consisting of Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, Focus Blast, and Switcheroo or Hidden Power Grass or whatever uh, other move you decide to go with. This is one of the few Floatzel sets that you really don't need anything more than what you have in the move pool. It has coverage for everything that it needs to hit, takes advantage of Floatzel's naturally high speed to fire off boosted special attacks, but unfortunately, this set utilizes the lower of Floatzel's attacking stats. Base 85 special attack is... Well, mediocre, and yes, I know, I am using that word a whole heck of a lot here. Other special attackers like Samurott and Gasp, Simapore, have better special attack to start, and the latter even has methods of boosting that special attack with Nasty Plot. And Samurott also gets access to Torrent, but that's less consistent, less reliable. That being said, Floatzel still has that unique speed stat and allows it to be and allows it to somewhat separate itself from other special water types, uh, as the rest either need rain or a turn of setup to be significant threats. 
However, it just so happens that these mons are such big threats under rain or with shell smash that they still usually find themselves on a team or a roster over Floatzel. That being said, Floatzel does have a lot of versatility. I mean, I talked about setup sets. I talked about a physical set, talked about a special set, talked about a uh, disruption set with Switcheroo Flame Orb that it can utilize. I mean, I talked about all those different sets. It just so happens that it doesn't do any one of those well enough to warrant a spot on a roster over one of the other high amount of low tier water types that are out there, particularly ones that I mentioned before this. So what's my opinion of Floatzel? If you can't tell, it's not a particularly good one. Between the limited move pool and mediocre attacking stats as well as the lack of viable boosting moves, Floatzel is unfortunately not going to be able to take advantage of that incredible speed as much as you would want it to, particularly in draft format and ends up outclassed in almost everything it tries to do. I'm going to have to give it to Simapore on this one. And just for a little bit of comparison, currently in Nenu League, Floatzel, I don't even think anybody necessarily looked at it. So yeah, that tells you a little bit. However, I still think that Floatzel does have potential. It's just missing that something that I talked about earlier. But yeah, with all that said, that is my opinion on Floatzel. Back to you, Sky. Thank you, Six. Really, really in-depth information about Float Seal and the reasons why we both actually think Float Seal aren't as good as Simipore. I think it comes down to the, basically the history of what offensively is viable without boosting no more. And Simipore, while not necessarily the most threatening Pokemon in the meta, has been consistently dangerous due to NASA Clock. Float Seal doesn't have that. I'm forced to run today, actually, Life Orb variant and it lacks a stab and now damage output to really do the denting power while offensively floats are stronger it isn't necessarily hitting as hard due to having weaker overarching themes and moves and this definitely works in its disadvantage float still however is a very good and interesting pokemon elite concept it's just there are so many good war types already and since you're usually forced to actually run um more often than not i should say a defensive Pokemon to be able to capitalize on something like that. Um, you don't want to cover yourself with a water Pokemon that are offensively active. A good example is for any bigger leagues where you rarely see ever Samurai, who is supposed to be one of the most dangerous sword stats war types in the game. That is a strong niche due to war typing itself. However, I have seen Simipore around and uh, I'm pretty sure with this video in mind, you know, we're really celebrating what it can do that I really hope I'll see more of it because Simipore is a very underrated Pokemon. And while one would say such a stick is saying that it is underrated and mediocre at best, um, I think in the right environment, it can be an extremely dangerous Pokemon due to the accessibility and variety of what that Pokemon naturally can do, which is something sadly Flosil can do to it being having a lot of different set yet being super one-dimensional in what it does well. And I think that works in a disadvantage and that is why Simipore wins this matchup. So with that said guys, what do you guys think? Which Pokemon do you prefer about these two? And quite frankly, have you used Simipore in a league concept? I do want to know, I want information about this. I'll definitely going to try it myself in the future, mainly because I was surprised how well rounded it was. I went in with this video that Float is going to be the winner, and yet when I covered them, I realized that Semipore is just an unpolished gem who really just needs some light and come back to the area of viability. So with that, guys, thanks for watching, and of course, join us next week for this interesting matchup.